BBC, how dare the Sussexes refuse access to us after we barged into Colombia? The British media remains angry the couple they labelled irrelevant is single-handedly reshaping everything from access to consumption of the lies they spew. They remain angry the Sussexes won't cower in fear. The sheer audacity. The BBC were not invited, but they barged in and demanded a seat at the table. Oh, honey, no. Harry loathes the British media enough for ten lifetimes. I'm sure he and Meghan were well aware of how they spoke about Nigeria and didn't want that happening again. Some would say that Sussex fans are wallowing in negativity, constantly engaging with the latest headlines and social media posts about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. It's easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of opinions, tweets and comments that flood our feeds every day. The media coverage is relentless, and it seems like there's always something new to discuss or debate. When we keep abreast of what the British media is saying about Prince Harry and Meghan, it can feel overwhelming. The tabloids are often filled with sensational stories and the headlines are designed to grab attention and provoke strong reactions. Whether it's a new scandal, a controversial statement or just another piece of gossip, the media never seems to let up. While I do think people should be more careful about amplifying negativity and hate, it's important to remember that not all engagement is negative. Many fans are simply trying to stay informed and support the Sussexes in their own way. They want to be aware of what's being said so they can counteract misinformation and defend Harry and Meghan against unfair criticism. I also think that it's perfectly reasonable to keep our eye on what the hell those salty people are saying. After all, understanding the narrative being pushed by the media can help us better navigate the conversation and advocate for a more balanced perspective. It's not about wallowing in negativity, but rather about staying vigilant and informed. Moreover, Sussex fans are not just passive consumers of media. They actively engage in creating positive content, organizing support events, and building online communities that celebrate Harry and Meghan's achievements. These efforts help to counterbalance the negative press and provide a more nuanced view of the couple's lives and work. It's also worth noting that Harry and Meghan have continued to focus on their charitable endeavours and public engagements, despite the media scrutiny. Their work in areas like mental health, environmental conservation and social justice has had a significant impact and garnered widespread support. Fans who follow their journey are often inspired by their dedication and resilience. In the end, being a Sussex fan is about more than just reacting to the latest headlines. It's about supporting a couple who are trying to make a difference in the world, despite the challenges they face. It's about celebrating their successes and standing by them through the tough times. And it's about fostering a community that values positivity, kindness and truth. So while it's important to be mindful of the negativity that can come from constant media consumption, it's equally important to recognise the positive aspects of being a Sussex fan. By staying informed, engaging constructively, and supporting Harry and Meghan's mission, fans can contribute to a more balanced and supportive narrative. After all, in a world filled with so much noise, it's the voices of reason and compassion that truly make a difference. The British media has desperately tried to influence American and international coverage of Harry and Meghan for years, and what sucks is that sometimes they're successful. What starts as a lie or smear in the Daily Mail will suddenly turn up in Deadline or People magazine. All of which to say, I'm still reading through the British coverage of the Sussex's Colombian tour. It's clear that the British media is beyond furious that they don't have access to Harry and Meghan, and they can't order the Sussexes to give them the access they crave. The Telegraph ran a piece demanding that the Sussexes spoon-feed briefings and content to them, all so they can independently scrutinise Harry and Meghan. Well, the BBC ran a similar piece with even more details about how little access they had to the Sussexes in Colombia. The couple and government only allowed their own videographers and photographers into most of the events. This decision was met with mixed reactions from the public and the media. On one hand, it ensured that the events were documented in a controlled and consistent manner. On the other hand, it raised concerns about transparency and the freedom of the press, which they say was to make sure events were represented accurately. The official statement emphasised the importance of maintaining the integrity of the events and preventing any potential misrepresentation. However, critics argued that this approach could lead to biased coverage, as independent media outlets were not given the opportunity to provide their own perspectives. Footage was released daily, with no sound. The silent clips were intended to provide a visual record of the events, without any commentary that could influence public perception. 
This method of releasing footage was seen as a way to maintain neutrality, but it also left many questions unanswered. Without audio, the context and nuances of the events were often lost, leading to speculation and confusion among viewers. The thing is, everyone would justifiably take issue with this if it was any royal couple doing a royal tour on behalf of the government. The public expects a certain level of openness and accountability from their leaders, especially when it comes to events of national significance. By restricting media access, the couple and the government risked alienating the very people they were trying to engage. This approach also set a concerning precedent for future events, where controlled media access could become the norm rather than the exception. Journalists and media organizations voiced their concerns, arguing that the lack of independent coverage undermined the principles of a free press. They called for greater transparency and the inclusion of diverse viewpoints to ensure a more comprehensive understanding of the events. Public reaction was equally divided, with some supporting the controlled approach for its perceived accuracy, while others demanded more openness and accountability. Historically, media coverage has played a crucial role in shaping public opinion and holding leaders accountable. Comparing past events with the current situation highlighted the stark differences in media access and the potential implications for democracy. The debate over controlled media access is not just about the present, but also about the future of how information is shared and consumed. In the age of social media, the conversation extended beyond traditional media outlets. Online platforms buzzed with discussions, debates and opinions from people around the world. Hashtags related to the events trended and users shared their thoughts on the controlled media access. This digital discourse added another layer to the ongoing debate, demonstrating the power of social media in amplifying voices and shaping narratives. Behind the scenes, media crews worked tirelessly to capture and edit the footage that was released to the public. The editing process was meticulous, ensuring that the final product aligned with the official narrative. This level of control over the content raised further questions about the authenticity and reliability of the footage. While the intention was to provide an accurate representation, the lack of independent verification left room for doubt. Public protests erupted in response to the controlled media access, with demonstrators holding signs demanding a free press and greater transparency. These protests underscored the importance of an independent media in a democratic society. The voices of the people echoed the sentiments of journalists and media organizations, calling for a return to open and unrestricted coverage of events. Experts weighed in on the issue, analyzing the potential long-term effects of controlled media access. They discussed the balance between ensuring accurate representation and maintaining transparency. The consensus was that while controlled access might offer some benefits, it ultimately posed a threat to the principles of a free and independent press. The discussion highlighted the need for a more balanced approach that respects both the integrity of the events and the rights of the media. In conclusion, the decision to allow only official videographers and photographers into most of the events sparked a significant debate about media access and transparency. While the intention was to ensure accurate representation, the approach raised concerns about bias and the freedom of the press. As the conversation continues, it is crucial to find a balance that upholds the values of a democratic society and respects the role of an independent media. But because Harry and Meghan are two private yet high-profile citizens, who gives a FK? It's like, oh, Bill Gates controlled media access when he did an event with a government official in India. Okay, and they took with them only one pool reporter from Harper's Bazaar, who released daily updates to the media about what they were doing. That's because the British media barged into Colombia uninvited. They arrived with their cameras and microphones, ready to capture every moment, without any formal invitation or prior arrangement. This unplanned intrusion has caused quite a stir, not just among the locals, but also within the international media community. The audacity of the British press to assume they could just show up and start reporting is quite astonishing. There was never supposed to be a travelling royal press corps attached to this visit. The visit was meant to be a private affair, a chance for the Sussexes to engage in low-key activities without the glare of the media spotlight. However, the British media, always hungry for a story, decided to tag along, hoping to catch a glimpse of the couple and perhaps stir up some controversy. And this convoluted whining and hissy fitting from the British media is all about concealing that fact that they were never meant to be there in the first place. 
their presence is not only unwelcome, but also inappropriate. The media's constant complaints and dramatic reactions are merely a smokescreen to hide their own missteps and overreach. They are trying to shift the blame onto the Sussexes, painting them as the villains in this scenario. The British media wants the Sussexes to be royal enough that they can demand access, yet they want to mock the Sussexes for not doing a royal tour. It's a classic case of wanting to have their cake and eat it too. They crave the exclusivity and prestige that comes with covering royal events, but they also relish in criticising and belittling the Sussexes whenever possible. This contradictory stance reveals the media's true intentions to exploit the Sussexes for their own gain, regardless of the couple's wishes or the nature of their visit. The British media's behaviour is not just unprofessional but also hypocritical. They claim to uphold journalistic integrity, yet their actions suggest otherwise. By forcing their way into Colombia and then complaining about the lack of access, they are undermining their own credibility. The media's relentless pursuit of the Sussexes, coupled with their eagerness to criticise, highlights a deeper issue within the industry, the prioritisation of sensationalism over truth and respect. This incident in Colombia is just one example of a larger pattern. The British media has a long history of overstepping boundaries and disregarding the privacy of public figures. Their obsession with the Sussexes is particularly troubling, as it reflects a broader trend of invasive and unethical reporting. The media's fixation on the couple has led to numerous instances of harassment and misinformation, further damaging their reputation and causing undue stress for the Sussexes. It's important to recognise the impact of the media's actions on the individuals they target. The Sussexes, like many other public figures, deserve the right to privacy and respect. The constant scrutiny and negative coverage can have serious consequences, both personally and professionally. The media's relentless pursuit of a story, often at the expense of truth and decency, is a troubling trend that needs to be addressed. As consumers of news, we have a responsibility to demand better from the media. We should hold journalists accountable for their actions and insist on ethical reporting practices. The sensationalism and negativity that currently dominate the industry are not only harmful to the individuals involved, but also to the public's trust in the media. By supporting responsible journalism, we can help create a more respectful and truthful media landscape. In conclusion, the British media's uninvited presence in Colombia and their subsequent complaints are indicative of a larger issue within the industry. Their behaviour highlights the need for greater accountability and ethical standards in journalism. The Sussexes, like all public figures, deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. It's time for the media to reflect on their actions and make a concerted effort to prioritise truth and integrity over sensationalism and exploitation. Oh, the poor gutter press is having a pity party because after barging into Colombia they weren't invited to any events. Too bad, so sad, cry harder. You're getting what you deserve from them, and that is bupkis.